Welcome to Lorenza. Some growers recommend a balanced fertilizer like 666, 10, 10, 10. 13, 13, 13, and 16, 16, 16 for dragon fruit. Some recommend applying a balanced fertilizer during the growing stage and then adding more potassium and phosphorus during the flowering and fruiting cycle. But is there an optimal dose of fertilizer for dragon fruit? How much nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium do we need to apply to maximize dragon fruit yield? In this video, we will discuss the results of a couple of studies which try to find the optimal dose of NPK fertilizer for maximum fruit yield. One of these studies was done in Vietnam in 2000. The other was done in Bangladesh in 2014. The Bangladesh study used the recommendation in the 2000 Vietnam study as a basis to see how varying doses could affect plants' productivity. Both studies have shown convincing and consistent results that we're sure dragon fruit growers would want to know. We will also show how to apply the recommended dosage of NPK fertilizer that exhibited the best results in the said studies. The first study came up with the recommended dosage of NPK fertilizer, which are as shown here. 540 grams of nitrogen per pillar per year, 310 grams of phosphorus per pillar per year, 250 grams potassium per pillar per year, and 20 kilograms of cow dung manure per year. Note that these quantities are good for one pillar of dragon fruit plants. One pillar supports four dragon fruit plants. You can get the effective amounts for each plant by dividing these quantities by four. As mentioned earlier, this dosage was used as the basis of the other study conducted in Bangladesh in 2014. This later study demonstrated how varying the doses of NPK could affect fruit production. Seven different fertilizer treatments designated as T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, T6, and T7 were considered. This table provides a description, as well as the corresponding doses of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium used in each treatment. Here, T3 represents 100% of the recommended dosage presented in the said studies. T1, T2, T4, and T5 represent 50% more, 25% more, 25% less, and 50% less respectively. All five treatments also included a one-time application of cow dung manure. T6 represents the application of nothing but cow dung manure, while T7 represents native fertility. Results of this study show that the recommended dose T3 had consistently produced the greatest number of fruits, which averaged about 31.64 tons per hectare, as shown in this graph. Increasing doses above the recommended values while increasing operating costs have actually resulted in lower productivity. This is indicated by the values that correspond to T1 and T2 in this graph. Both resulted in about 27% lower productivity compared to T3. Application of less than the recommended doses also resulted in lower productivity, as evidenced by the results of T4 and T5. Application of only 50% of the recommended doses T5 actually exhibited lower productivity on average compared to T6 which is the case where only cow dung manure was applied. This only shows how important accuracy is in applying fertilizers to maximize fruit yield. You need to apply the right amount of fertilizer, not more or not less, in order to get optimal results. Now, let's take a closer look at the recommended dosage and see how they are applied. T3 represents treatment using 100% of the recommended dose, which is as shown. 540 grams of nitrogen per pillar per year. 310 grams of phosphorus per pillar per year. 250 grams potassium per pillar per year. And 20 kilograms of cow dung manure per pillar per year. Considering there were four plants in each pillar, we divide these quantities by four to get the equivalent quantities per plant. We get the following. 135 grams of nitrogen per plant per year. 78 grams of phosphorus per plant per year. 63 grams of potassium per plant per year and 5 kilograms of cow dung manure per plant per year. These amounts are to be applied in 4 installments. This table shows the schedule of application for each dragon fruit plant. It shows the required amounts of nutrients as well as the timing of each application. 
first application includes 54 grams of nitrogen and 23.25 grams of phosphorus. These are applied immediately after the last harvest of the previous season. The second application is done two months after the first and it should consist of 40.5 grams of nitrogen, 15.5 grams of phosphorus, and 9.375 grams of potassium. The third application, consisting of 13.5 grams of nitrogen, 31 grams of phosphorus, and 25 grams of potassium is done just before the start of the flowering cycle. The remaining amounts are applied in the fourth or final application, which should be during the fruiting cycle. The entire amount of slow-release organic fertilizer, cow manure, is applied only once and that is at the end of the last harvest season, which coincides with the first application of the NPK fertilizers. This table provides the corresponding amounts for each pillar, considering there are four plants in each pillar. Before we end, let me emphasize the importance of timing in the application of fertilizers to achieve optimal results. Note that the demand for nitrogen is highest at the start of the growing season, while demands for phosphorus and potassium peak during the flowering and fruiting cycles, respectively. This is clearly demonstrated by the percentages of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in each application. We have come to the end of this presentation. I hope you find this video informative and useful. If you like this video, please like and write your comment down below. If this is your first time to visit this channel or if you're not subscribed to this channel yet, please subscribe now. Also, please don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get updated whenever we post new videos. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the day. Goodbye.